Kira D'Amato back in Chicago, ready to race. This time, a lot of changes coming into this one. You said on the stage that lots of unknowns and trying to figure out what it's all worth. As of right now, where's your head at? There's so many things to pull from. So, it's been one of my best builds. I feel like my mileage is higher, I'm training at altitude, volume is better, intensity. Uh, it's been really, really solid, but like I just don't know what that equals. Yeah. You know, it's like usually it's like this plus this equals this. So now I'm like this plus this, I have no idea how to translate it. But like I wouldn't be surprised if I PR, but I also wouldn't be surprised if I didn't PR. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> this is also new and just uprooting the family and changing everything. Like I'm sure it's going to take a little bit of time, but I don't know. <laughs> We'll see what happens. We'll all find out on Sunday. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's break down the different variables. So, and how either difficult, challenging, or easy it was to, like, adjust to, to them. So first, Coach Ed Eyestone and his philosophy, like, what attracted you to it? And then, like, quick, how did you quickly adapt to it? Yeah, I think with Coach Ed Eyestone, seeing that he's coaching, you know, he, two of the three men that made the Olympic marathon team were under his, like, coaching. So I kind of immediately trusted that. And he's been there and done that himself. Um, and I wanted to try altitude too. So it was like looking through the right coach in the right place. And um, yeah, and like his, I really liked seeing like how much Connor races. So that was the reason I was initially tied because like Connor was on the same like race plan as me. So it's like, okay, this coach will let me race as much as like Connor races. And then, uh, yeah, and just the success they've had and then like what kind of people they are. So from working with like Ed on the broadcast the last couple of years, like he's a good, solid, like honest person. And you see the same in like Connor and Clayton and his team. So, um, so I like that. So that's why I was drawn to it. All right. So then altitude, was it hard? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Like the first like few workouts. I was like, what is wrong with me? You know, it's like, you know, Al, like, I don't know. You kind of feel a little bit invincible as like a like pro runner sometimes. And you're like, oh, I'm so tough, I can do this. But like, I was humble week after week. Um, and then I started like, it started to take hold. I started to like acclimate a little bit and get some workouts under my belt. So by the end of it, I feel like I came out on top, but, um, but we'll see. I also know altitude is, you know, it's a long-term thing. So it's gonna be build after build and altitude is what's gonna make me really strong. Wrong, but I'm hoping I yeah, feel the bennies on uh, Sunday. <laughs> so I was chatting with Isaac Wood, who's like my you know Utah source, and he was telling me that like even coming up with like there's you had a surplus of people pacing you in workouts and in long runs, very different from the setup in Virginia, right? Yeah. You roll up to a long run and there's like 20, 30 people. They kind of open the long runs up to the community. And I think that's so cool that they do that. But I think before it was like, everyone tried to run with Connor and Clayton and then everyone just fell off. And so I think the community is like relieved to have like, like the all-star group and like the B squad and like I'm holding down the B squad. So I think it's now like a couple different pace groups for long runs. But it's so cool to feel that support and have people bike with you and hand you water bottles and to plan out your routes and just like support you on and off the roads has been really, really cool. It's a really strong running community and I've yeah, loved it. How does Centro fit into all the plans, especially for this weekend? <laughs> Centro's a wild man. <laughs> I came out and I started like, hey, do you want to run together? And I started kind of sneaking about on long runs and like the longer and longer and longer. And I'm like, you're ready to do a marathon. So I think he's curious about the marathon. This feels like very low risk because it's not like he doesn't feel any pressure other than just try to run a little bit faster than, than me. Um, but he's been so much fun, so positive. He's like... The only thing though, if we do a run that goes by the car, he can't run by the car and not stop. So it's like, I, for long runs, I need to make sure we don't see the car until we're like 24 miles in. So if, I, if we don't see the car, I can get him 24 miles, but if we run by the car at like 18, he's a goner. But he's been so much fun. I think it says a lot about his character. He's hit the highest of highs winning a gold medal. And then he can also be like humble and generous and love the sport enough to come back and pace like a friend through your race. I think that's really cool. So is he going to go all the way to the finish? Like He's going to try. Really? Okay. He's going to try. I think his goal is to finish the race, yep. for sure. Um, but we'll see. <laughs> I think he's totally capable. Like, my paces are pedestrian. When you, you can run, like, a 340 mile, like, running, like, 515, 520 pace is pretty chill. So. Yeah. Um, all right. We're a lot of American record talk, right, leading into this. 
do you pump the brakes on those expectations or possible? Like, where, where, where should we measure things right now? Like, I wouldn't be surprised if I'm in PR shape. And if I PR, that's like knocking on the door of the American record. So, so I don't know. Like, I really have no idea. But um, if it's a good day, maybe. If it's not a good day, probably not. But um, yeah, I'm kind of somewhere in between. I have no idea. All right, then the challenge with your husband. Tony's got to finish within 40 minutes. How did we plan on 40 being the magical number? So he just came up with that. I think partly what it is is he turned 40 in January. I turned 40 in a week. That's right. So I'm like, I'm almost there. I'm not quite a master yet. But um, so I think maybe that's where it started. And then he thinks he wants to break three hours. So that's what he's been training for is to try to break three hours. So. And that's right close to me breaking like 220. So it seems like a pretty like fair line. Like I don't know where the Vegas odds are on that, but yeah, he's been working hard. He's been having fun. So yeah, really rooting for him. How hard was altitude for him? Dude, <laughs> he like every single long run. I think he finished and be like, this isn't for me. Like this is like I like he loves altitude. He loves the mountains, but training for a marathon when he hasn't trained for a marathon in like seven years, it's been a lot. Oh, but he's been working hard. It's been really great. Um, all right, I think that I think that got that covers everything I had for for the weekend. Overall, just like what's going to make you super happy coming out of this weekend? I think a really strong, solid effort. You know, I feel like my last couple of marathons I've missed the mark, and my body's broken down in different ways. And I think for me, finishing strong with a really solid performance, I'll be happy. So amazing. We'll be rooting for you. Thank you.